Welcome to Model Horse Tax School. My name is Carrie, and today, you guessed it, a halter bridle. Now this is going to be for Pepto Boone Small, and um, I'm going to do something a little different. I've made these before, and what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to use my um, 330 seconds for this part, the bridle part, the thick areas, and I am going to use Talking pink, a uh, one sixteenth inch ribbon, skinny ribbon, for these smaller areas. Okay, so it'll kind of, um, yeah, this will be one sixteenth. You kind of see that. Okay, so that is what I'm using. First thing is to take a look at all the lovely hardware. This is very hardware um, heavy. Um, so I need um, to pull this to the side here and kind of show you. We need the ring. That's the that's the ring. So we'll put that aside. I know I have that. Um, let's see. On the uh, this is for the bit. So the bit um, is attached to these hook. So I need a hook, um, a hook, a D, and a buckle. And I need, so, and, and that's double, right? So I need one on each side. Down here we need, those are square. I'm gonna go ahead and use a traditional scale halter rings. And then we've got the little loops for, you know, one, two, three, so that's what we're gonna use there. Um, going up, I need, um, I need buckles for uh, the one eighth inch, not one eighth, uh, three thirty second inch there. Um, and then I have, a buckle here. I need a buckle. You can't quite see it, but it's right here behind the ring. I need that. And the, 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 the. then I'm going to need a bit. And so I've, I've chosen these. Um, they're stamped snaffle, uh, not etched, just a basic utility uh, style bit. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. It looks like I have an extra buckle. Uh, well, I'll just put it away when I'm done. But that is the hardware that we need for this. There's a lining in here on that nose band. And so I have some white suede I'm going to use to mimic that. It just comes over the edge there. So my first, my first piece, if you can see him, is going to be right over the nose. And um, this has a funky little end here, so hopefully I measured that right. Um, I put my pieces in something like this so that they don't, when I go to clean off my surface, I don't, you know, clean them off right onto the floor. Um, okay, so I need it to go this way. And then make sure I have this in the right place. And it should go up higher, right? Because we don't want to strangle our horse. Did I make that too small? Okay. Not a lot of holdover, so I cut that pretty tight. And make sure on these halter rings that the, um, these got all Rio Rondo. Okay, I use Rio Rondo hardware. I'm they have such unique stuff, and I can't make it for what I can buy it for. And it's so time consuming what I'm doing anyways, I, I don't really make hardware. Okay, so that is that. And if you get like a little bit fold over came out, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kinda snip that off very carefully so that you can't see that that little bit of fold over came over. And then I actually have more of this, but this is a pre-cut piece for, look how dirty it got. All right, so 
the best place to do this. So I'm going to put it philosophy for dry fitting. I think she should by now. Of course it's suede so I overglue all the time. It's so hard not to. But suede is really um, sensitive to glue, so we're going to See how just a little bit extending past? That's what we're looking for. So now I'm going to cut it so I just have a little bit extending past. There we go. So the next piece we need to do is this band right back here. It's actually uh, doubled or tripled over, and there's a buckle. I hope you can see that. See right in here? That's the piece we're doing. So what I'm going to do is measure a triple distance, make sure I've got plenty. So about where I think the rings plus fold over, so which is probably more than I need. So I'm going to go this three times. So that's one, two, three. And that should be plenty. And so we need one buckle. So the side is thinner. The other side. Okay, so if you look right here, it's got like that house cut. I'm going to talk about the roof of a house. So that's the kind of cut it has. I'm going to go ahead and simulate that here. And then we want the buckle to be on this side. This is always the fun part. I want it on this side but I want it facing this way. I think that's how we, we'll see if I got that. It's sometimes a brain bender. All right, hey, I think that's it, okay. And then we're gonna go ahead and buckle. Seems really long. Um, probably is. I, I would rather cut it too long than too short. So that's there, right on the nose. It's way, way longer than I need. Okay. Wish I had smaller fingers sometimes. Yeah, it was way, way over. So I would go twice then, I guess. I want triple. All right. So. I mean, technically, it should buckle the other way, but I'm okay with this. Um, I remember why. Because it's so hard to deal with a really small piece of leather when you're buckling and adjusting. So I have a tendency to go more than I need and then, and then cut off from there. So I do want keepers for this. I want one, and they're sliding keepers. I want one here and one on the other side. So... Let's put on a keeper. Oh, 
I could use scrap 1 16th. You could use the 3 32nd. Um, I'm using 1 16th because um, the keepers are usually made of a smaller leather. So there's a keeper. That was just me counting to five under my in my head. Okay, and then yep, over here. It's just so it's not going all over the place. I suppose you could train it and blah 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 blah. But me, I'm gonna do it this way. And then we can snip it in the house shape. Okay. The roof of the house. It actually doesn't have the point in the middle. It's um, more of a barn than a house, but okay. You can snip it any way you want. Next thing is we just, we need these cheek straps and they're only really going to go to I would say that's about just below the eyeball. I mean, that would be my guess. I haven't seen it on a horse, uh, for this particular one on a horse. Um, so right now we're, we're right here. It's a little loose, it's fine. I prefer it loose because it's kind of a halter. And um, I would go to, I would say about the eyeball. Because I have this D ring here, I'm going to double that over because I'm going to need to hold that D ring in place. You know, see that? So I'm going to do double, make one for the other side. Oh. Okay. So now we'll put our buckle on. And I should have scribed this thinner. What we'll do, it's really the same thing. We want to cover the overlap. So that's going to be our overlap for the buckle. And then we just kind of line that up there and figure out our buckle. That's good. And then and then I'll put my key ring where I want it, put halfway down. Now I can. Next is going to be the strap that goes right over the top there. So let's go ahead and make sure I got enough of this side. I think I do. Okay. I know that's as far as that goes. It says right here. So I just want to go to where the D is. And then over. I think I'm going to wait a little bit after I get it um, sized to the horse before I 
start snipping for edges or for endings. Um, okay. We still have a ways to go here. All right. Now, next step, I'm going to measure for this piece coming off that jump ring. So, go ahead and put that jump ring on. And uh, it shouldn't go really any further than Oh, you don't want it too tight, so probably there. And this is our teeny tiny stuff, and I know I want to use the ribbon, but I think for this piece, I'm going to not highlight it that much. I'm going to just basically I don't really want that in pink ribbon. I want the other in pink ribbon. I really want my brow band and my throat latch in pink. Maybe my rings. Okay, I'm gonna just, I think that's probably gonna be enough, but because it's just, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it now. <clears throat> yeah, but I'm not gonna do it tight because I want it to be able to move. So I'm just gonna glue it just like right in there, leaving that little bit unglued, right? And I'm not, gluing this end because I ha still have to attach that to the throat piece. All right. There we go. Now this is going to be my throat piece and I don't want it to be too tight so I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna give myself plenty and this doesn't cut well with my wire cutter, so I'll just get those out. Now, the trick with this ribbon is it can fray really bad. I don't know if you ever used ribbon, but it can it can fray. So what I do, because you know, glue is my friend, is I go ahead and um, kind of secure the ends with some glue. at least the end that is the free end. And on the other side we need a buckle. Alright, be my friend. One sixteenth inch skinny ribbon is hard to find. You're not going to find it in a store. You'll have to look for it online. Um, I had bought a whole bunch when I was doing my Arabian horse costume book. I pretty much bought it in every color in the rainbow. And, um, come on. There you go. And so, that's why I have it. And that was, oh, a long time ago when I wrote that book. So, you can look for it. I bought it at a place called Crafta. Um, but you have to buy it by the spool, and I think there was even a minimum number of spools. And they didn't have the good colors, like they didn't have black or red, which I just found very annoying. <laughs> so those are two colors I would use the most in Arabian horse costumes, you know, the black and the red. So the um, that's where I would go, is I would just look online for 1 16th inch skinny ribbon. And and then just see what colors they have. So this takes longer than leather to set. So I'll go ahead and crimp it with a clamp, clamp it, clamp it, crimp it, I don't know, whatever. Um, and then while I'm letting that dry, we're going to see what we can do for the brow band brow band you see here there's two loops so I'm gonna give myself plenty because I'm gonna to have to come back to make two loops and I can cut off the excess right so that should give me more than enough 
And I'd rather have more than enough than not enough. So, yes, way plenty. So I'm going to go ahead and treat my ends. That should be enough time at least to have it set up. <clears throat> now, you're, your buckle ends up on this side, but you want to make sure that when you buckle it, this end goes down. So this here is really, that's what we want. We want this on this side. So you can start this on any side you want. I would go with a natural curve here of my um, medium rather than fight it. And so we want to have that go over, right? But I need to make two little pockets. Okay, so now that it's dry and I've had lunch, we're going to move on to the other side. And um, what I'm trying to do here is make sure that I don't pull it too tight. And then I've got a pretty good idea. Plenty. So I'm going to kind of finger press so I know where it goes and then I'll take this off. This here was too big and I may have to just put a little connector in there so that this isn't that wide. Um, I'm probably just going to do that because I didn't like how big that gap had to be for the glue to hold it down. So I'm going to take this. It's a really bendy, small, probably a 22 gauge wire, so it's pretty small. And I'm going to... I rarely have to do this, but... Bend it there, and then hold it and bend it there. Pull this back. Cut it. Now, some people won't like this because it's metal up against your model. I don't blame them. Oh, I should do it this way. But that'll get me the separation that I need. This will still be able to move, and it's going to be tighter in than that one, so it's probably a better way to do this. Alright, so now I can snug, nice and snug there, glue this on.
get it right up there where the clamp is. I'm already modifying it to suit being in miniature. So there we go. So that should give me the separation in the picture. But also fit the scale. Okay. And um, we're going to figure out what the length is here. So when it's where it's supposed to be, right there, it's going to be pretty short. Looks like it's only going to be about that long. So. I need to make a loop. So, it's not what I really want to do. I need it to be on this side. I need. That then I'm gonna put that in there because it's being just so cooperative right now. There we go. That's my little loop. Then I stay in there. I'm just going to leave this be for a bit. That was a lot of glue I put on there, so I may regret that later. But right now, let's see if that's going to work for me. If not, and I really can't do that till these dry, so I'm going to go ahead and let this dry a little bit, and then I'll be back. Okay. So I went ahead and trimmed off the excess and probably could do a little bit more trim there, but I want to see how this is going to work. Their loop is twisted this way and I don't know how to do that this tiny. So I'm just going to get a little jump ring in there, I think. Uh, this is a, uh, let's see if the four millimeter is big enough. I think that might solve my problem. I'm just gonna rather than trim that off, I'm just gonna glue some of it down. That's going to work better. And then she 
just going to make it in there. That's good. There we go. Okay. Okay, so the next piece is from the D-ring to the bit. And so it looks like this buckle goes over that way. So we have the buckle, then it turns to the bit, it goes up through the ring, and then down through the buckle. So it's got to go right away is there. Okay, so it would be wherever the bit is. Up here, uh, there would be a hook, and then it would go back down, and then it would turn up. So, as always, I'm cutting more than I need. So let's put the buckle on first. I need to start using my skinny fingers. Let's go ahead and glue that down. I usually need more with the ribbon than I do with the lace. I don't know if you've noticed that. I'm more of like three-eighths instead of a quarter. Um, so setup time on the ribbon is 30 seconds to a minute, where leather to leather it's like five seconds. I usually count to five and it sticks. Okay, we have to make sure we have a right and a left when we do this. <laughs> make sure they mirror or it'll look weird. Okay. We're probably going to want to do a keeper here and just because it works out so much better, I'm going to do them out of leather and I'm going to make it a sliding keeper, not a fixed keeper. So that means I'm only gluing down one side. Now I, I've done keepers in ribbon. It's possible. It's difficult. It's annoying. So that's, I'm going to go ahead and use leather. And because I'm using both, you know, colors on this, it's not going to look that unusual. At least I don't think it will. Okay, and then we need to take this D. Oh my gosh, these things are so tiny. My fingers just feel so fat in comparison. So, I'm going to take this D and the flat edge and I need to snip it. Now Rio Rondo has D's that already have a slit in them which you pay extra so why not just make your own slit. Open that up a little. I'm not going to put my hook in there. Sometimes I think I need three hands. Alright, that's open. Look it's in there. And um I usually have to smash it that way and then just a little bit this way to close that up. And then hook is usually points to the inside, so I put it in my hand so it's facing the inside, and then we put this in. Let's just make it easier to buckle by putting a point on it.
sometimes. Let's hope I didn't get a twist in it. Okay. And so we're going to make another one of these, and then um, I'll probably put on another keeper up here, like it has in the picture. And then um, we'll check and see how that fits. I'll have to fit it. Okay, so we should have these two bit straps, mirror image of each other, and now we have to adjust them for length. So we take my skinny fingers here and I'm going to hook that there we go and I'd say they're too long so it's a lot of dog collars that are like this now isn't there where you got like all these twists and turns just to make them smaller I know it's because that hook this hook is so long I don't have shorter ones okay so now if we tighten up our I think that's about it. I mean, I can tighten up up here, and that'll help. But that's that's what it's going to look like. It's a very small strap. Okay, I'm going to do that to the other side, and then um, I'll go ahead and put the bit on with some uh, mini hold, and we'll see. In fact, that might even help with the fitting. So. I don't know if you use this stuff. Um, you also find it's called sticky stuff or tacky wax. Lots of different names for it. Uh, you put it right there where you want the bit. And then it'll hold that bit. And that way we can, we know where that needs to be and then we can adjust the rest of this. Now I know I need to tighten this. That's fine. Um, but I really need to make this shorter and do the other side and then I'll be back. So I've sticky waxed in place and uh, I tightened up up here so it fits where I want it to up here. Um, I could probably make that tighter, but it's halter, so it should have a halter look on it, which means not too tight. Um, both sides now have been fitted and trimmed, so see, buckle. Uh, I need to put a point on this here. And I think I want one leather keeper here, and then I'll trim that. And then that pretty much finishes up uh, the halter bridle part of the halter bridle, if that makes sense. Uh, next up is reins. Reins are reins. And then also a lead rope. I'm not going to do the lead rope in this video. I think I've got another, um, another idea for how to do that that I, I want to show you in a different video. Um, but that's that. And... Um, Here's what I want to do. It's pretty simple. I'm going to do the reins. Um, they're just round, all the way around. So they kind of lay on the withers, right? Um, like that, a loose rein. Um, because it's a Western bridle, it would be loose rein. If it was English, it would be tight. But this is Western, so it'll be loose. Just kind of hanging on the on the weathers, withers here. Um, but I'll put it on, and then I'm going to put a keeper right behind it one of the little leather keepers. So that's what I'll do. It'll um, kind of look like uh, an ending, one of the mini rain, rain endings, and it's a simple one. So I'll do that, and then I'll be back to show you. Okay. So here we're at is where we're at. It looks pretty good. Um, it's got some weight to it, so the gravity's affecting it, and that's always helpful in, in miniatures. Um, anybody who's ever had a curb bit knows that there's something missing, and that is the curb chain. So I could just attach chain from there to the other one and call it done. That's not realistic enough for me. So what I do is I have two buckles, two two millimeter jump rings, and a length of chain that I'm pretty sure is long enough to go from one side to the other, plus the buckle, plus the ring. So 
my first thing is to add these teeny, teeny, tiny jump rings. To the curb chain, somebody once asked what the gauge size is. No idea. It didn't say anything when I bought it. Usually doesn't say when you buy retail. Um, even the stuff at Rio Rondo, they don't tell you what the gauge size is. So all I can say is it's about one millimeter wide. And I don't know if you can extrapolate that to a gauge size or not. So there's my curb chain. And now I have to do the buckles. I am going to use this. I could use the lace. Or I'm sorry, I could use the skinny ribbon. Um, but this is going to be more realistic as far as I'm concerned. This is going to be stronger. And, and my next step is I have to take... I have to take it off the horse or I have to unhook the hooks so I'm gonna see if I can just unhook the hooks so we need to put the curb chain in this hoop uh, this loop right here we're gonna have to go chain and then because I want the extra lace to point in the opposite direction, so I want to go chain loop, then, oh yeah, that's better, then the bit, then the buckle, and then we want to work that flat. And then I want to do the same for the other side. Take a little bit of glue, I'm gonna glue right in there, hold that down, snip that off. That is good. Then make sure I don't have any twists in this chain. Then how many twists in my rein? Now we're gonna buckle this really tight. And we want it to be able to lay flat, so I'm giving it that much, not much. Let me tell you, it's not very much. Probably more glue than I need in there, but so basically, the glue is right behind that buckle. Okay, I find that acceptable. I'll show you pictures. Uh, thank you for spending time with me and uh, have yourself a good day.